All right, so, guys, the question we're going to do is this. Uh, we're going to do number five. I know you've already done it. Just at, just out of curiosity, does anyone not have this sheet? If you do not have this sheet, you should have gotten it yesterday if you didn't have it yesterday. But I would recommend getting it out because we're fixing to go over it. So the question that I want to do is number five. Now, I don't know if it was on the video or not, but if it wasn't, that's fine. If it was, that's fine. But I'm going to show you an easy example of how to do the molecular formula from an empirical formula. And the reason I'm going to start with this one is because, one, you should know the formula, and number two, it's only two elements, so it's going to go really quickly. So the first thing that tells you is this hydrogen peroxide is 5.93% hydrogen and 94.07% oxygen. And then it says find the formula of hydrogen peroxide given it has an overall formula mass of 34 grams per mole. Now, the one thing I don't like about this question is it's missing a word. On my test, it will have the word, and the word should be sitting right here. And that word would be molecular. So I will specifically say, find the molecular formula for hydrogen peroxide. Okay? So let's start off with knowing what we have. So they've given you two pieces of data. They've given you the percent of hydrogen and percent of oxygen. Now, what units are those two things given in? Percentages. Super easy. They give you percent. What do you do? Drop it and change it to grams. So we have 5.93 grams of hydrogen, and we've got 94.07 grams of oxygen. If you're not writing this down, you're doing it wrong. Okay? This is from the sheet. But I'm going over to make sure that you did it right because I don't think it was on the video. If it wasn't, then that's even better. If it wasn't, then that's even better. So like I said, I would write it down. If you've already done it, that way you can comp compare back to it. Now, step two. Once you've got grams, very easy next part. What do you do? Convert it to what? Moles. Very good. So we're going to go grams. We're going to go to moles. So I've got grams. I've got moles. I've got grams. I've got moles. You know, moles should always be a what? A one. And then where do you get the grams from? Product tables. Anyone know hydrogen? Very good. And oxygen, you should know, is always 16. All right. So let's do 5.93 divided by 1.01. .01. That gives me a value of 5.87. Um, we're going to stop there because I need three sig figs. And then the bottom one, 94.07 divided by 16 gives me to four sig figs, 5.879. Now, just because they're almost identical, I'm going to go ahead and give you the four significant figure on that one. Now, this should be very easy. First of all, the question is, what is next? Divide by the smallest. This is an easy answer. Which one's the smallest? Technically, hydrogen. However, when you divide both of them by the 5.871, what are both of them going to become? One. So I'm just going to write this word. Do not do this on the test. I actually write that number. But we're going to divide by the smallest, which technically is that one. And then both of them are going to turn into what? Once. Say that again. Did I do something wrong? Okay. Now. We're trying to solve for the EF. And what does EF stand for? Empirical what word? Do you see a formula anywhere written? No. That's your next step. So what did those two ones turn into? Subscripts. And what is it going to be? And there's no such thing as those in chemistry. Now, this is the next part. You should, I hope, know how to do this. This next part is the reason why I'm teaching this. It's how to convert from the empirical. Now, my first question is, what does empirical even mean? Simplest whole number ratio. Can that get any smaller? No, that's it. So my question now is, how do I get from the empirical to the molecular? And I gave you this formula. Does anyone remember what it was? It was the mass of the MF over the mass over the EF. Now, here's the deal. One of these numbers has to be given to you. One of the numbers you've got to figure out. Which one of the two is given? 
The top one. Yes, ma'am. The empirical to the molecular. Not give them. Given. So, that is got to be given to you. And if you look at the question, let's go back and look at the question. And again, it's right here. What would be that value? 34. Because it says, define the formula of hydrogen peroxide given if it has an overall formula mass of 34 grams per mole. So I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to go ahead and write 34 grams per mole. Now, this is the part where you have to do a little bit of calculating. Where does the empirical formula mass come from? Solve for it. Now, what was the empirical formula of that problem? HO. What's the mass of hydrogen? 1.01. What's the mass of oxygen? What's 16 plus 1.01? 17.01. So we've got 17.01 gram per mole. Some of you math wizards, what is the answer to that formula, of that question? Two. Now, I want to stop for just a minute and make sure we're all on the same page. You have to know that black formula. Okay, I'm not going to help you with that. You've got to know it's the MF over the EF. Can I give you a hint? When you, let's pretend that you got this upside down. You got it backwards. You did EF over MF. If you flip the red and the purple number, what type of number would you get in green? A fraction or decimal? We don't want fractions or decimals, right? We want what? Whole numbers. So if you get a fraction or a decimal, that should be your first indicator. Something's wrong. Always get a whole number. So it should always be your bigger number over your smaller number. Always. Okay, that's your first indicator. Now, the final question is, what is the empirical formula? Is a 2 a formula? So what do you do with that 2? Multiply it by the subscript. So your final answer should have been H2O2. Now, the reason I started with this problem is, I think some of you already knew what was the formula of hydrogen peroxide. H2O2. And so this proves that the data that we got gave us the correct formula. Okay. Again, my biggest concern is you knowing the black formula and then knowing what to do with it once you do that. Again, if you get it upside down, just it's, it's going to come out as a decimal. You don't want decimals. You always want whole numbers. Any questions? Okay. Let's do one more together. Let's do number six. A strong oxidizing agent and rocket propellant. <laughs> I've been sneezing all day. That won't be the last time. Has a percent composition of 34.43% nitrogen and 69.5% oxygen. Find the molecular formula if its formula mass is 92 grams per mole. Now, what type of units are the data given in? Percentages. What do you do with the percent? Drop it and change it to gram. All right, so I've got 30.43 grams of nitrogen, and I have 69.57 grams of oxygen. All right, Robin, what's the next step? Very good. Grams to moles. Grams, moles, grams, moles. One over one. We know that oxygen is 16. Does anyone know what the mass of nitrogen is? Very good. I'm glad you said that last part. I have seen in the past where students leave off that .01. Now, is it going to make a huge difference? No, but let's be accurate. Now, we need to do a little bit of calculations. So 30, oh crap. Somebody have a calculator doing this with, because mine just went off. Say it again. Thank you, sir. Can you give me one more decimal place? Thank you. And then did you get the other one? Mine takes forever to come back on. 
Say it again. Can you give me one more sig fig? All right. So those are our number of moles. Three, four, eight. 69.57 divided by 16. I've got that. 69.57 divided by 16. 4.3. I got, I actually got 348. Oh, I thought you were talking about the first number. My bad. I thought you were saying it was, uh, never mind. I don't know what I was thinking there. Now, Emma Rizzi, we've got our moles. What do we do next? Which one is the smallest number? The top one, very good. So 2.172, and obviously the top one's going to turn into what? A 1, and then that one is going to be uh, 2 point, I just, I want to write down a certain thing. It's going to be this right here, 2.0019. Well, what does it turn into? 2, very good. All right, so our impair, excuse me, our molecular formula is NO2. That is the empirical, yes, sir. I, I, no, we're solving for the molecular. I was stopped, and I said I didn't. I didn't mean to. You have this is the empirical formula. So this is the E F right there. We're going to do that. That's next. You have to do this before you can do the molecular. Okay? You have to do the empirical before you can do the molecular. Why? That's a good question. Why do we have to do that? And I'm going to ask you this right here. This is our formula to convert between the two. So, Michaela... My first question is, where does this number, where does that number come from? It's given to you in the problem, right? Where does this number come from? Now, my question to you is, you can't get a mass without a formula. Well, based on the question, there is no formula anywhere in it, right? Well, what, how do I get my formula? You have to do the work we just did to get this thing, okay? Okay. Now, so now we need to calculate the mass of that thing to plug into our formula. But before I do that, what is the mass given in the problem? 92. Now, does that go on top or bottom? It goes on top. So it's 92.0 grams per mole. Now, let's see if any of you are smart in the brain. What is 16 times 2? What is 32 plus 14.01? Forty-six point zero one. Let's see if you're even smarter. What does that equal? It equals two as well. Very good. So your final answer, which is the molecular formula, would be what? N two O four. Fantastic. N two zero four, and that is the MF, the molecular formula. Do you agree this is all just methodical? I mean, it's just a method. The numbers change, but the process never deviates. That's impossible. If that happens, let me ask, let me throw this guys, let me throw this at you. Hypothetically, what if this came out to be 2.6? I'm going to assume. Do you agree that blue number was given? that something went wrong with that number that you calculated. Because if you're doing a correct empirical formula, this number right here has to be a whole value. It has to be. Does that make sense? So if it does, my first step would be to go back and check, did I calculate this mass right? And if you did, then go back and check, is my empirical formula even right? That would be my my steps. And if you got that right, then it's just a busted problem. But it should not be. I'll tell you on the test, I'm not going to give you one like that. What's wrong? Yeah. Now, 
we're fixing to do one of the hardest problems we can do. And if you can do this one, you can do any of them. Okay? Now i got to remember which one it was. I don't remember if it was 5 or 8. You okay? <laughs> What's wrong? I think it... That's not always true. Skogel, yeah, pepper. All right, let's try number five, and if that's not it, then I know it's number eight. Barry Um. <laughs> that's a guy, Barry Um. Barry Um has a sample of a compound which weighs 200 grams. And it contains only carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. So the reason why this one's difficult is there's four parts to it. So it's just more calculations we got to do. Yes. Okay. And then it tells you he finds that it contains 97.56 grams of carbon, 4.878 grams of hydrogen, 52.03 grams of oxygen, and 45.53 grams of nitrogen. Now, look at the question. What is the question? Empirical formula. So do I need that MF over EF thing? No, this is just a basic, straightforward empirical formula. So we're trying to find the simplest ratio between these two things. All right. Now, I, I'm going to have to come off of this screen, but I'll come back to it once we get all of our data. Um, so it says, some of you all have actually already wrote it down. How many grams of carbon? Five, seven? Five, six grams of carbon. Anybody get the hydrogen? 4.878 grams of hydrogen. Anybody get the oxygen? 52.03 grams of oxygen. Anybody get the nitrogen? 45 point what? 53 grams of nitrogen. So it could be as simple as two elements. It could be as complex as four or five. But does the process change? What's the first step? Convert grams to moles. It never deviates from the process. The numbers are the only thing that changes. That's why some of this stuff is easy once you learn how to do the repetition. Okay, so I've got one over one over one over one. Carbon, what's its mass? <coughs> Thank you. Hydrogen is 1.01, .01, oxygen is 16 even, and nitrogen is 14.01. All right, so let's run these numbers and see what we get. So we've got 97.56 divided by 12.01. We've got 4.0. 878 divided by 1.01. .01. We've got 52.03 divided by 16. And 45.53 divided by 14.01. .01. And so what I'm fixing is I'm just fixing to write all these numbers down. So I had 8.123. I've got 4.830. Got 3.252, and I'm going to stop after this and let you guys catch up. 3.243, and all of these are moles. All of those are moles. I'm going to just kind of let you guys catch up. Hold that thought. This is why we're doing this one. Just be patient. Just the empirical. All right. So from this point, you've just got four things to deal with, but what's the next step after converting grams to moles? Divide by the smallest. Now, there's two that are very, very, very close, but which one is the smallest? 
the bottom one. Okay? So 3.243. Now, what are the bottom two going to turn into? Ones. One and one. Now, this is where it's going to get sticky. That's fine. That's fine. Now, all right. Hold on. Let me let me ask answer his question. What color are you asking? Can I round it? Purple. You have to maintain in the purple numbers, the same number of significant figures that are in the black numbers. Does that answer your question? So if you notice, all of the black has four, so all of my purple has four. Now, Massimo, once you get to the brown, you can just, you can go, you can start getting like this. Okay? Now, how many of you see a problem? What rule has been broken? That one nine rule, right? So here's my question. What do you do if one, and we actually have two, but what happens if one of them is not a one or a nine? Okay, now let me ask you this, Lily. When you said you multiply it by two, say that one more time. Everything. And I'm telling you now, students make that mistake every year. And I'm telling you, something like this is going to be on your test. Where you're going to have to manipulate this. It's not just going to be a straight answer. So what do you multiply by two? everything. So this is by two, this is by two, this is by two, and this is by two. Well obviously that's going to be two, that's going to be two, but one and a half times two is what? 1.5 times, actually let me do it by the whole thing, <laughs> because it comes out to be three, and then two and a half times three is what? Why did I do that? Okay. Oh, yeah. So this isn't the problem I was actually looking for, but that's okay. All right. So all of these numbers come out to be whole numbers, correct? Now, if you leave it like this, you're going to lose a bunch of points. Why? It's, you have not written a formula. The key is the empirical formula. So, what would be the final formula? Very good. That is the empirical formula. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. I'm not going to give you one this large to do this next part with, but I just want to show you something. Hypothetically, if I said I needed the molecular, do you agree that this top value would be given? Hold on. I'm the, I said an H word. Hypothetically, if. My question is, if I asked you to do the molecular, could you do the empirical formula mass? My question to you Based off of this data right here, what would you need to do it? What color would you need to do it? You need the mass of the thing in green. Because, look, it says the map. Why do I keep hitting the wrong button? It says the mass of the EF. What is the empirical formula? The thing in green. So you would do 5 times 12.01, 3 times 1.01, 2 times 16, and 2 times 14.01. And whatever that number gave you, you would you would plug that in on top. You would plug in the number I gave you on, on top. Excuse me. You know what I'm saying. And you would get another number, and you just multiply it. Okay. All right, let's do one more. One more. I 
didn't actually do it. I was just ask. Did you do it? Mossman, let me ask you this. Okay, that's fine. I want to do number eight. So y'all go ahead and write down part the part of it you can do. <laughs> Ethel Buter, ain't ya? They sell pineapple candles. I don't want a candle. <laughs> Lily, what are you talking about? It's because he's Italian. I agree with that. Flavored candle? Flavored candle? Did you say rump roast? Lauren, I'm talking to you. What did you say? I thought you said we should have a rump roast. I have no idea. I smelt that one. Actually, that one smells good. It really does. <laughs> All right. Shh. All right. I got a question. So number eight, it says 200 grams of an organic compound is known to contain 83.884 grams of carbon, 10.486 grams of hydrogen, 18.64 grams of oxygen. And this is the important part. You're going to see this on Tuesday. And it says, and the rest is nitrogen. So my question to you is, do not say this out loud. Keep it in your brain. Do you know how to get the, quote, rest of it? Bailey, what would you do? <laughs> Natalie, what would you do? Um, you would add all the uh-huh. Perfect. That's the exact answer. If some, if one part is missing, you find the missing part from subtracting the pieces from the whole thing. Okay. So you would add 33 plus 10 plus 18 and all the decimals and subtract that from 200. Now, did anybody get what that was? All right. So let's go from there. So I'm going to actually need your help. And there's one reason why we're doing this one, and I want to show it to you. Okay. Now, so help me out. What was carbon? 83.88. Really? Is that? Sheesh. Okay. What was hydrogen? Uh, what was oxygen? I didn't, I didn't hear that. Eighteen. Okay. And then what was um, nitrogen? Eighty-eight. 86 point what? So are all of my numbers correct before we move on? <laughs> they don't have to have the same number of sig figs, no. Uh, 10.486. That's the wrong button. Um, 83.884. And then 18.64. All right. So, again, process never changes. What's your first step? All right, so we're going to go grams to moles. We're going to go grams to moles. We're going to go grams to moles. Go grams to moles. Okay? So I've got 1 over 1 over 1 over 1. And then I've got 12.01. Uh, I've got 1.01. I've got 16 even. And I've got 14.01. All right, so let's run all these numbers. Anybody already got those? That would be fantastic. Kelly, do you have them all? All right, what's the, what is the carbon? Johnny, help me out because I can barely hear. 
6.984. Okay, go ahead. 10.4348. Okay. One point one six five. Hang on, pause. Go ahead, the last one. Six point two zero nine. All right, now what's your issue, Natalie? Ten point four eight six divided by one point oh one. Ten point. I got it as three eight two. Yeah. All right. So there's a small change in the second one. Uh, it should be ten point three eight. 83. I guess I should have done them. Uh, 6.9. Yeah. Change the last digit in the first one to a 5. All right. So there's your three. Uh, Michaela, will you let her in, please? Yes, ma'am. All right. All right. Do you agree that these three right here were all listed? Okay, you would add all those up, get a number, and subtract whatever that number was from 200. Now, why 200? Because in the problem, it says 200 grams is known to contain. So that nitrogen has to be a part of the 200. Okay? You walk all the way around. She's not here. So chase her down. Okay? Now, Again, same process. We've got moles. What do we do? Divide by the smallest. Okay? So 1.165. Okay. So the top one is going to be divided by 1. Point, let's see. Equals divided by 1.165. That comes out to be uh, 5.99. And I promise I'll move. Give me one second. Divided by 1.165. 1.165. This comes out to be 8.9. That comes out to be 1. And then 6.209. All right. So this one's going to throw us a curveball. Now, Massimo, what's wrong with this one? Yep. That is not a whole number. So we've got a rule that's broken. That 1-9 rule is broken. But here's what I want you to all do. First of all, what are you going to multiply all of these numbers by? By 2. But here's the thing. I don't want you to all practice this. For right now, only worry about the bottom one. Multiply 5.3 times 2 and tell me what you get. 10.6. Now here's the deal. That still doesn't get us to our 1 or 9. But here's the problem. You may see this. If 2 doesn't work, what do you do? Three. But what value do you multiply by 3? Do you do the 5.3 or the 10.6? The original. Go back to the original number. Now, multiply 5.3 times 3. Tell me what you come up with. 15.9. Is that right? Well, no, here's the reason why I asked that. It may not have been this problem we did earlier. We did a problem earlier where we had to go all the way up to 5 before it worked. I will never give you one that goes above 3. Ever. But the problem we did, I don't know why or how. The brown numbers. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. So, we multiply them by 3. So, what is 6 times 3? 18. What is 9 times 3? 27. That's 3. And this turned out to be what? 15? Turned out to be 15. Now, that is a really huge 16. Shush. 
Now again, if you left it like this, you would still lose credit because you didn't the final last easiest step, and it's literally just writing the formula. So C18, H27. Thanks, Lily. Okay. So you feel a little bit more confident about this. Good. And I told y'all, this is not hard. It's just very methodical. You have to follow the steps. Just like formula mass, just like molar conversions. The numbers are the only thing that changes. The process stays the same.